Once we have created the map of the actors involved in various ways in the teaching and learning experience, we need to get to know them in order to design this experience in the best way. It's useful to concisely describe the key actors involved in the process. This does not mean a thorough investigation, nor an analysis that describes reality in detail. It's rather a creative process that aims at developing our awareness of the major features of the main player within the Learning Innovation Network, that is, students and teaching staff. When we are designing a course, we implicitly formulate hypotheses regarding the actors involved in the teaching and learning experience. It's useful to make them explicit and to jot them down on paper as a basis for designing a consistent teaching and learning experience. Furthermore, in a second moment, we will subsequently compare the assumptions we made with the reality we face in the classroom. If we find a wide gap, we can apply corrections to actually reach the intended learning outcomes. But pay attention, we need to formulate hypotheses related to the actor within the process, that is, students and instructor. But we need to do the same for ourselves as teacher designers of the teaching and learning experience. To describe the actors of the Learning Innovation Network in a way that is useful to us, we can take our cue from both user-centered design techniques and instructional design research based on user observation. Firstly, we will focus on objectives and expectations of the main actors involved. These objectives and expectations can be related to practical, institutional or personal and professional aspects. For example, students may aspire to develop specific skills to enhance future employment opportunities, while teachers may aim at developing their research areas. In terms of features of the users involved, we will surely need to consider the knowledge and cultural backgrounds of students. As uh, for the instructor, we could consider their specific area of research or their personal aptitudes for different teaching and learning styles. We will also need to take into account needs and constraints of the users involved. For example, time constraints that have to be considered both for students and for teachers. Finally, motivation is an aspect of the utmost importance. We know that for students, motivational aspects strongly influence the learning process, but also for instructor, motivation is crucial. A teacher who is highly committed to education is likely to go beyond a mere transmission of concepts, contents, abilities, by conveying interest and passion for the subject though. Once we have created the map of the actors involved in the teaching and learning experience and we have described their main features in the inner cycle of our map, how we can proceed in the design phase? The teacher designer can select some key aspects to keep in consideration during the design process. It is important to point out that it's not possible to satisfy all the expectations and needs that emerge during the design process. On the contrary, the advice is to select which aspects to focus on and to work on them. But we always need to maintain a systemic perspective. In other words, we need to make a decision according to the aspects of the main actors we want to consider and we have to modulate the various elements of the Learning Innovation Network, these activities, content, channels, and the external world, accordingly in an integrated way. But personal aptitudes of the teacher need to be carefully considered, as they cover a fundamental role in the teaching and learning experience. In conclusion, to create the Learning Innovation Network, we need to start from identifying the nodes of the network, 
and we have to describe them concisely in terms of objectives, expectations, feature, constraints, needs, motivating and demotivating factors. Concisely describing the actors allows us to focus on the elements to be leveraged when designing and implementing the teaching and learning experience. If we have a clear overview of the various elements of the system, it's easy to modify position and roles of the involved actors in the Learning Innovation Network as we are proceeding in the teaching and learning experience. This without denaturing the project, but rather maximizing the achievement of every learner in terms of intended learning outcomes.